Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Miss Clicks D and D Devotion. How are you guys doing? Yay. Awesome! Happy right. holidays! Yeah. yeah. From work and stuff. Decided to wear the hat of mm -hmm. Christmas time because it's like the only time in the year where I can wear it, except like Halloween, but it's kind of weird. <laughs> Well, I'd like to start off the show by giving a huge shout out to Stephanie for completing yeah. Canada's Smartest Person and winning Canada's Smartest Person. Literally, yeah, Canada's cool. Smartest Person is a co-founder of MissClick, so mm -hmm. yeah. what does that say? Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. I loved what Trump said in the group chat, though. He was like, oh, I'm sorry, Jen. You are the second smartest. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I was like... That's a really weird backhanded compliment, but I will take it. It's pretty, I think it's more <laughs> sweet than insulting. But to be fair, you weren't there competing, so... To be fair, but no, I like. I think Steph would have beat me. I'm really, really bad at math. <laughs> I don't even know what was involved, but I'm interested to like see what... It's like a bit that. of everything. There's like I watched the whole show, so it's like a... There's social intelligence, musical intelligence, logical intelligence. What do we watch the show? Watch win. Huh? Where can we watch the show? It's online, but you can only watch from Canada. Yeah, oh, but you can easily uh, spoof your address. That's why I had these. <laughs> <laughs> um, wasn't there one Jen where she had to like she had specific words she had to put into a speech? Yeah. Yeah. Do it in the proposal. That was like every time there was a linguistic challenge, I was like, "This is so unfair!" Like, yeah, yeah, but she still bad. kicked ass at them. Well, she did pretty good at them. Like, I think she did great at them, but like other people beat her at pretty much all the linguistic challenges. That's true. She got third out of four on the the one. the speech one. That's still, I think well. English she's is our really second good. language, yeah, so that's she's pretty really good. good for a second. Like, it's crazy that she beats English speaker at those challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. I'd be embarrassed if I got beat at English speaking. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, most Americans aren't like the best at English. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did amazing. I was mm -hmm. super proud. And the weirdest part is that I was not even surprised. I was like, eh, she's going to win. Well, I mean, you, you put a I pro gamer on a game show, and what do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. Like a gamer, and it's Steph. She's like really ambitious, and she's like a tryhard. So of course she's gonna. Win. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. I can't wait to watch it. I haven't gotten to yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah, I accept my title of second. <laughs> first. Second smartest. Hey, well, second smartest is still pretty good. Yeah. Well, let's let's kick it around the table and see what's been going on with our cast for the last week. Um, Anna, you want to start off? You're in a new location. Yeah, I'm, this is my living room, aka Warhammer playing room, aka sewing uh, streaming station, because our apartment is tiny, so everything's on top of itself. But uh, Jeff is streaming tonight too, my husband, so we had to share space, so I'm kicked out of the home office. And uh, I'm on holiday break as of today. I'm kind of working a little bit, but also just taking some time off, and I'm going to Portland and Seattle. For the holidays very excited um also i know i already told you guys about being at the white house but i posted a vlog of my time at the white house on my twitch channel and i tweeted it so if you guys want to see what it was like kind of behind the scenes and then also i got like a special spur of the moment tour uh so i vlogged that and i also walked around washington dc at like 2 a.m to all the national monuments so i vlogged that as well so it's a fun vlog and it's on my twitch channel twitch.tv slash anna presser if you guys want to check it out and also, I got rid of my pink streak, and I went to bright orange. Orange. Yeah. Hmm. It's not quite bright enough, though. I might have to zhuzh it up a little bit. That's the big news in my life. What about you, Neil? It's like redhead colored. Yeah. Uh, I'm driving down to San Francisco tonight, as soon as Miss Clicks is over, ah. to go pick up Lauren, my wife, from San Jose tomorrow morning. So uh, I get to drive on twisty, windy mountain roads at night. That's going to be fun. Is she Woo! looking at grad schools in San Jose? No, no. She's in the middle of a 10-day silent meditation retreat. Whoa. Um, there are... Man, Lauren's so cool. She does such cool stuff. She's really cool. I don't know how I got this lucky. Um, 
something happened and I got like the really good end of a stick somewhere and <laughs> someone else is probably getting screwed for this exchange to happen. <laughs> like, that's the thing that you like expect to be hearing about Lauren. Like, oh yeah, Lauren's just finishing up a 10 day silent meditation mm-hmm. retreat. Like who else do you just casually say those things about? Lauren's so freaking yeah. cool. Uh, on New I Year's. Who's getting this short end of the stick? It's Anna with her ones. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's just redistributing oh. all like I think so. Energy to like Anna's dice ruling and also Ryan. Yeah. Well, we're going to go see Primus um, on New Year's Eve. And then, like, four or five hours after that's over, she's going to hop on a flight to Thailand where she's going to go spend like six weeks learning a uh, dance meditation technique and then going off to Bali with her friend who lives there now to go and go practice yoga and hang out on the beach for a couple more weeks. Um, So, my wife's life is way more interesting than mine. Um, Jeez, your wife's life is way more interesting than everyone. Yeah, I know. Uh, so that's my life for you guys. Uh, Kess, what's up with you? Uh, after, how do I how do I go after that? Uh, <laughs> for glass, so that was really cool. So I'm going to be working on some glass projects. Uh, it started to snow up here, but the snow is gone. So hopefully, hopefully in the next couple weeks it'll come back and I can go snowboarding um besides that just working uh streaming a lot and fitness is allowed on on twitch now again so started back up the fitness streams and have some other projects in the work and we'll be streaming Christmas Eve and Christmas so nice that's me sweet Jen what's up with you I uh, what do I have? Yeah, I'm leaving. Uh, well, I am also officially on vacation, and I haven't taken a vacation in forever. So, for the couple of few days, because it started on Friday, technically, I still felt like regular life. And I think today it's starting to feel like a holiday. So it took me until Tuesday. Aren't you going to Florida for Christmas? Not yet. I'm going to Florida on Thursday, and this is Uh, when the actual vacation is going to kick me in the face and be like, stop thinking about work, dumbass. And And we have so many cool shit planned with uh, Brandy and Jossam Art and my mom and dad. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm flying out with my mom and dad, and I'm going to stay there with them for one day. Then I'm going to go stay at Brandy's and Steven's house, Uh, and we actually book an escape the room with my parents <laughs> they never did that ever so it's i bet it's gonna be horrible and they're like not even grasping what we're gonna do which is great How's my dad's there? like so we're competing i'm like nope against other people i'm like nope against each other nope <laughs> yeah, they're actually my favorite pastime so huh? what is I'm super excited for you i love escape the rooms they're like oh yeah they're amazing. so much fun and then I've still going, never done one. I really want to. I want to do it with you, Anna. It would be so fun. I know. Yeah, let's have a group escape the room sometime. Yeah. yeah. All right. You'll, have, you'll come out to Portland then, and we'll do one there. I wish we could film it. It sucks that it's always not filmed. I think... Like, it would make a great live stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I it think would really make it a great bad live. business. Huh? Mm-hmm. It would be both good and bad business. Because once you watch it, you can't do it. Yeah, but just one. Uh, like, you'd have the one room that you accept to, like, stream out of for, like, publicize, and then mm. you have all the others. I think that just encourages them to change it up. Yeah. Be creative all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, they can keep the same setup, but, like, change the clues and the puzzles. I think that would be really fun, and now I want to live stream one. <laughs> I want to live stream and escape the room. <laughs> yeah, I think it's- Call like a place in Portland or whatever and convince them that we need to live stream it. Well, now that we have IRL, you could just do it from your phone, wherever you are. I know, I just yeah, got the attachment, the camera attachment, because I want to start streaming heights and stuff. Wow. That'd be awesome. I'd watch that. Cool. I streamed from my phone waiting in line for Rogue One. How was that? that? was really fun. The hey. movie or waiting in line? Waiting or streaming? in line. <laughs> well, waiting in line and streaming it. Uh, I used my iPhone 6 and I used a app called Live Air Solo yeah, and both of those things worked pretty well. The only problem was that my connectivity wasn't good enough to support anything more than like 480p. So it was super pixelated and there was some sort of mic problem. Like it was very echoey. 
So I think I need to get a better like microphone or camera attachment. Did you have a headset in? No. Oh, that's probably why. why. Because the mic will go through. You have to wear a headset with them. Ah, I um, should have done that. And then you can use the mic or the phone. Otherwise, yeah, because the speaker and all that is so close together, it picks it up. Well, I didn't hear it coming out of the phone, but that makes sense. Yeah. I sh also sh could get like a, a headset with a mic on it that would probably be better. That too. That's another reason uh, thing people are saying because then you could have the phone anywhere and mm -hmm. you don't have to have it like necessarily right next to you. Yeah. But my phone's been super bad connectivity, which is just my I need a new phone problem. But. Yeah, the iPhone 6s, every time a new iPhone comes out, the, all the problems start with. I know. Ugh. I'm about to switch to a Google phone, I'm telling you. I really don't want to because I like to be an early adopter on software and Apple always has software first, but I'm just about fed up with this iPhone life. Yeah, it's hard. I'm glad you no longer have to have a Skype call from your phone to your computer to stream outside. Yeah. That was a pain in the ass. Um, and I'm going to Disney. <laughs> Disney World? Yay, stream from there. I actually still have, I have a hotel, not a timeshare, but it was like Hilton years ago. I still have it. It was like, oh, you pay 140 and you get a hotel for three days, four days or whatever. And you just go to like a two hour thing and then you get a certificate and all this stuff. So I got that so that one day I can go to Disney World. Mm. That's, nice. That's awesome. What about you, Trump? We haven't heard anything from you about your week. Oh, well, I just managed to defeat World Hall of Fame champion Brian Kibler in a best of nine duel in a card game. Uh, Elder Scrolls Legends. That was fun. Nice. Cool. Congrats. So we have America's smartest person over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You guys can be like second, third, and fourth. Wow. And the rest of the week, I'm gonna try to hit that See, legendary. It hurts a little monster. bit anyway. <laughs> By the way, uh, I think I saw the division <laughs> game in chat. Jen, you're yeah. for supporting us here. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Hamish, the come there from division, just using the division like channel to say hi. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Well, uh, let's I'm talking about playing Dota, which I love. It's like, hey, the division's like, let's play Dota, Jen. <laughs> Let us do a recap of what happened last week in game. Uh, what happened last week? Hmm. Ran into a crazy band that apparently everybody loves, and they have some new innovative music. Or they're scamming everybody. Yeah, who they're are these people? More annoying than freaking Koibu Chorus. I know, I didn't write down their name. I have Koibu Chorus written down. Let me find them. No one wrote down the name of the new band? I hate them so much. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I tried to forget because I hate them and I'm jealous of them. Wow. I well, just, I was just actually learn. mad because we made up Koibu Chorus oh, and then the Neil. Bandus. Secundus. Oh yeah, Secundus. with Guy Claypool who has a bass voice, a thin face with high cheekbones, a tight cap with a red bow tie. Mhm. Mm and his drummer, Bash Rockstorm, a big fellow with a vest, a top hat, glasses, and drums. Mhm. Mm and they also have some backup dancers with them. Little Timmy's Kitty. What? What? <laughs> That's really it. <laughs> Oh, that's one of their songs, Little, T Little Timmy's Kitty. Um, Guy Claypool is the vocalist. Guy Claypool is the vocalist with the, the deep bass voice. I um, hate them. But yeah. I kind of like them too. So. I just hate them because we made up a perfectly good nemesis band and then Neil had to go make another one instead of adopting Koibu Chorus because he's mad that we made it Koibu. Oh, <laughs> if you think this is the last you've seen of Koibu's Chorus, Anna, you're in for a surprise. Or I shouldn't say a surprise, but uh, don't worry. The, the best band in the world will still be around. Good. Uh, good to hear. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the party is... Uh, 
uh, has moved all around um, after coming through down here. I think this was Rockwave. No, I don't remember the name of this town down here. Um, Half Hill, that's it. After coming through the, the checkpoint at Half Hill, which was screening for uh, screening the, the line of people heading southward to make sure they're all welcome here, the party moved northward to, I believe, Evermond, where they went to the slop trough and uh, performed their songs. Unfortunately, slop they arrived. Slop trough with... is like the premier venue for barddom. Mm hmm. Definitely. Um, unfortunately, they hadn't announced their arrival ahead of time, so they couldn't get a good time slot. Uh, they had to, I don't want to say open for Koibu's Chorus, but they were the, the uh, Koibu's Chorus was the penultimate act one night, or the ultimate act one night, and the party was the penultimate. And the following night, uh, Secundus kind of just overtook everyone. And there are some questions that the party has had about the uh, honesty of their work. Yeah, we're questioning super hard. Mm -hmm. Because they seem to have only been playing for a couple of months, and yet you were totally enthralled by them. Their music was just fantastic. So uh, there's some questions as to if they're legit or not. And I think the party and, was going to follow them out somewhere. And Ransom had his ears plugged and was not enthralled. Well, I mean, he everyone else was. Yeah, but he couldn't hear the music. Of course I he was wasn't. I was outside and I was... <laughs> Not enthralled either. Well, yeah, but you guys couldn't hear the music. How how could you enjoy it if you can't hear it? You know. Yeah, so but reasonable. I, well, I kind of want to get a spell of like hearing while not being there to see if I'm also enthralled by like distant hearing. Hmm. Well, I wonder. I don't have it. No, it's a wizard spell, right? Well, you guys are in Evermond. And I think the night has drawn to a close after some of the party members tracked uh, Secundus to the, the noble's house that they were staying at. Um, next, they're headed out to High Meadow, which is the direction the party, I believe, wants to head in as well. So, um, Why were we going out that way? Just to follow them and find out about them? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Cool. So let's start. Uh, you guys are in Evermond, a nice, sleepy, quiet river town. Uh, except for, of course, the slop trough. And uh, what do you guys do? Morning. Don't we want to try to follow? Yeah, uh, we'll have uh, woken up a bit earlier to make sure not to miss them when we're leaving. Okay. Sure. I um, also want to re connect with the guy, the bartender of the slop trough. Just right. ask him a question. Rufus. Rufus, yeah. What do you have for Rufus? Well, I just go up to Rufus and say, wow, that, uh, that's a Kundus. They really were something. Good job booking them. Oh, man. You know, I just, I hadn't heard a sound like that before, and it, it just, it took me away. Did you? Did they perform privately for you before you booked them? Yeah, they came through one in a, a good spot, and I told them that all the good spots were taken. Uh, and then they they asked if they would, you know, if, uh, a sample might change my mind, and I told them it wouldn't. But they they went ahead and played anyway, and I'm certainly glad they did. You know, it takes guts to be a, a good performer. It takes guts to put yourself out there like that, and they they've definitely got guts and talent. Man, those guys are good. <laughs> Uh, just you wait. Kesson Kellen uh, is going to rise up to those standards soon enough. Uh, I hope so. I'm, we'll be back soon enough. It's best not to compare yourself to other artists. You know, it's it's really comparing yourself to others is a, is a good way to get stuck in a downward spiral. Just be yourself, man. Just be yourself. Uh huh. <laughs> and I just uh. I collect everyone else, and I guess we'll head off to a noble family's house. Okay. Um, so you guys... Way, mm -hmm. Kellen, is, uh, Kellen was super sullen the whole time there at Slap Trough, because he was really mad, because that was his, like, he was going to prove 
that Kess and Kellen were like the next big thing. He was going to show off to Olivia and he was going to like prove to his parents that they were wrong. He could do it without them. And then he got overshadowed by Secundus. So he was just kind of like melancholy and stuff. Uh, but he spent some time pouring uh, some energy into his new song that he's been working on, which was uh, uh, We Should Keep Each Other Warm, which he dedicated to Olivia. And he kind of realized that he'd been like, you know, really sullen. So he's trying to make up for it. So as they're walking, he's like tickling Olivia and like picking flowers and giving it to her and like giving super amounts of attention. Hey. Olivia is like not pushing him back, but not reacting like, ooh, it's like, oh, thanks. Hey. Oh, no. And then she goes and like give him a kiss on the cheek. Like, oh. Helen uh, tries, brings out his loot and starts like, playing a few bars of we should keep each other warm for her and like keeps asking her opinion like what do you think sweetie is that good do you like it what's your favorite style i think it's a good start <laughs> <laughs> she's been feeling down it's an old and uh, noticing that my brother has been stolen i just try to keep him in a positive spirit so uh, I've just been super positive and knew that we had some really good songs, even though, like, Secundus obviously did the best at the show, but we were still really strong. So just pointing that out and continuing to work on my own stuff, dancing and playing the ocarina. Yeah, don't show them any mind. They were clearly using some sort of trick. Yeah, uh, exactly. So what do we want to do to try to figure out this trick. Do we want to confront them on the trail or do we want to just try to figure it out at the next place they're performing? I honestly think we're going to have to figure it out somewhere else because if we're on the trail with them and we run into them, I don't think they're just going to admit what they're doing. They would have already. They're very sneaky. So. Well, then shall we uh, just make it to gold medal before them and then wait around for them to show up and perform and try to figure it out there? I think that might be the better of the idea. Thoughts, uh, Olivia? Helen? Olivia's our manager. She gets to decide. Babe, I know you're going to make whatever the right choice is. Yeah, let's go for it. I don't have any particular opinion on this one, so... Majority Babe. wins! Hey! Babe, why do you feel so sad? Why are you so sullen? What's wrong? I feel like we haven't done anything special lately, like, we haven't been shining this much, and we've kind of been, like, camping in town over here, and... What are you talking about, Olivia? Did you not see the last show? We did very well. Yeah, very well. I know what I can give you, babe. I'll write you a song right now. And I start storming my lute, and I'm like, Olivia, Olivia. What can I give ya? I'll give you my heart, I'll give you my heart, and I'll give you everything else that you want. Olivia! You like it? I... Yeah! And then I give him a kiss. Sweet. <laughs> I'll keep working on it. I call that one Olivia, What Can I Give Ya? <laughs> it's, a, it's a really nice title. I like it. Good. I'm glad, because it's for you. Fantastic. So you are you trying to meet up with them before they leave town, or are you trying to uh, get to the next town before they get there and wait for them? Sounds like the plan is to get ahead of them and just watch them perform at Gold Meadow. Okay. So you guys take off to the next town. Um, let's see what happens along the way. Fantastic. So you guys are walking along the road uh, between the two towns. Where are they? Um, kind of coming up this path. When partway through the day, uh, you're stopping at a little roadside tea shop for a little break. You see coming towards you is this giant creature. He must be like seven and a half feet tall, covered in this short but thick fur. He's got a, a, a red sash that goes over his shoulder down to his hip. And from there, from the sash, kind of like falls a, another garment. It's like a, a weird, almost like a, a toga style clothing going on. 
and dangling from a belt that wraps around the sash is this big mace. This is like seven and a half foot tall, kind of pointy but floppy eared, squat nosed, furry creature. Um, the other patrons here at the tea shop are looking at it with wide eyes, kind of stunned at this thing coming down the road. I'm not paying attention. I'm strumming Olivia. What can I give you? And staring at Olivia with like heart anime eyes. Stay thing? close. I say uh, to Cass as I grip my halberd a bit more in case he's dangerous. The... What does he seem to be doing? Like, is he being aggressive? Or... I mean, he's walking down the road in your direction. You don't. Mm. You don't know what the hell this thing is. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I smile at it as it starts to pass, pass us by. Um, but I also stay a little closer. Uh, stay a little closer to the group. Can I cast a motion read or like? Sure. Do you have a, a spell? Mem is a motion read what you memorized for today? I like that spell. Okay. Uh, the range is five yards per level, so you're going to have to wait until he's within five yards before you can cast is it. Is it awkward if I cast it on him? Like, is he going to know? Um, let's see. He does get a saving throw. He'll probably... most. I think most creatures will understand that they're... How should I say? Um, if, you f if he passes his saving throw, he will know. If he fails his saving throw, he won't know. All right, um, I'm good. I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, the creature stops in its tracks and starts to look around, and you get absolutely no read from its emotion whatsoever. Your spell fails. I kind of hide behind my party. <laughs> he looks Don't around. Don't worry, Olivia. I'll protect you. Sniffs the air and then huh, spots you, Olivia. And starts walking, this time a little more menacingly. His head tilts down to his chin to guard his neck. And you see his hand moving to his side. Uh, not quite drawing his large mace, but getting ready to. I pull out my crossbow and I'm like, hey, you're scaring my girl. Back off. Yeah, large I stand in the front and I, I don't point the halberd towards him, but I clearly have it in my hand. Whoa there, buddy. No need to make menacing moves. He snorts, a little bit of saliva drips out of his mouth. The other patrons at the tea shop are hurriedly packing their things up and walking away. The proprietor uh, has kind of just ducked behind a table. Uh, the creature draws his mace slowly and says in a halting common, You! You are a witch! Don't talk to my girl like that. No, that's not what? very nice. A cleric, actually. Keeper of the peace. Witches get burned. Come. All right, that's it. If you say anything else mean to my girlfriend, I'm going to shoot you in the face with this crossbow, and I'm not even going to feel bad about it. Yeah, don't come any closer. Uh, clearly, I'm ready to strike him with the halberd if he walks in the range. It's about honor, you know? It's like That's respect. So, what do you want from us? We're not looking for any trouble here. He starts to take a, a wide berth around the, the armed camp here. Gets to the other side of the road. Still looking at you, watching. And then starts walking back to the, the north side of the road. And then starts walking yeah, back to right. the south side of the road. He just starts pacing back and forth across the, the opposite side of the, the road from the little tea hut, snarling and eyeing Olivia specifically with, like, daggers in his eyes. I take out my little, like, religious emblem and I'm like, Cleric! Not a witch! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mary that guy Luna, has no chill. Mary Luna, bless you in this village and whatever you are up to. Except if it's a bad thing, then it's not blessing you. His pacing continues, and he looks to be getting a little more and more pissed off each time. It's almost as if you're taunting him, or he looks, he seems like he's being taunted. You know, he's just, he every walking? time you say something, he gets a little more angry and a little more frustrated and starts flexing his muscles oh. and sticking out his chest, and his pace increases. 
You guys. Did we just maybe keep watching? We talk to him anymore. Yeah, I told him to shut up about my girl, otherwise I'd shoot him in the face with a crossbow Helen. and he did shut up. Helen! Let's just keep walking. Yeah, well, uh, Let is he, be... like, on the other side now? Can we walk forward towards Gold Meadow? Yeah. Yeah, just let him sure. be. Um, we keep, uh, I keep, uh, based him, but I start walking away. Okay. Um, you guys start walking away. And you notice he picks up the pace behind, or not picks up the pace, but follows behind you guys by a good you know, maybe 50 or 60 feet, snarling and eyeing you suspiciously. Let's go see what the people at the tea shop have to say. Uh, I notice that he's walking behind, and I just give a slight warning to, to our group, maybe not to say anything that might taunt him or upset him, and hopefully he'll go away. You know, buddy, uh, you just happen to be on the right road here. If you continue that way, you might find some work backup dancing for a good singer group. That's good advice. You should express yourself creatively. It'll help. I, I don't, I honestly don't know how he reacts to this. <laughs> Maybe he feels special. Uh, I think he's confused. <laughs> I think he and I are both confused, and he kind of stops in the middle of the road, fingering the end of his mace before he turns around and stalks off angrily southward along the road. Not, not really sure what to make of this strange band of creatures. Yet again, art and compassion foil another violent confrontation. Good, Good job. job, you guys. Okay. It feels like I leveled up just from that. Anyway. <laughs> Defeated another monster. Yeah. Okay. You guys continue along the road until you cross a little river. There's a stone bridge. There's a couple of guards on the bridge who don't charge you a toll or anything. They just kind of give you a look over and give you a nod. Don't even say anything along the way. Uh, you cross the stone bridge, and maybe a quarter mile later or a half mile later, you're in High Meadow. Another sleepy little town in this devastated countryside. Um, you can see out in the, the fields, there are some areas that should be tall with grass, and yet they're just blackened and scorched. Other sections have uh, wheat that is being harvested actively by the farmers out there. Uh, to the north side of the town, you can see what looks to be a... Um, whatever a collection of fruit trees called. It's not a grove, it's a... A cops? Sure. I don't know. I know that's a word about plants. Um, I think an it's orchard. Oh. There's an orchard to the north of town. Uh, but you guys arrive safe and sound in High Meadow. Uh, what? High Meadow. What Plays are it. you? <laughs> How are you doing, Meadow? <laughs> What are you guys doing, High Meadow? To the tavern or the performance place. Right. There are three taverns in High Meadow. Um, there's Splash, um, Grubhub, <laughs> um, and Frank's favorite tavern. Frank's famous tavern. Which one is known to have the best music? And or which one have I performed in? Or Ke Kellen and Kess performed in? Um, Kellen and Kess have performed in the Grub Hub before. Uh, as for the best music, that's not something that's quite been established yet. They're, they're mostly taverns. Music is kind of like the side thing that they have on. And they just each tavern just takes whoever shows up. They don't... They're not like a, a prime stop on the music scene. You know, they, they haven't really developed a musical culture here. Well, shall we go uh, to all three and ask if Secundus has booked a performance? That sounds like a great idea. Uh, since this is your turf, why don't we stop by the Grub Hub first? And... Okay. I can say hi to Mary, who runs the Grub Hub. Sure. She's nice. 
All right. You guys enter the Grubhub. It is a uh, interesting setup here. At every table has kind of this like trench that runs down the middle of it. And you come and you pay a flat amount of money and then you just sit down and the trench is constantly being filled with a bucket of soup. And then you just get like edges of bread and you just kind of dip your bread into the big trough in the middle of the, the table and kind of eat out of it. And occasionally someone comes around and fills the trough again. Gross. These guys are centuries ahead of their time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's, that's how they do it here at the Grubhub. Uh, but you come in and Mary's there slopping the trough for the people. Uh, sees the two of you come in and gives you a beaming smile and goes, Oh, how are my two favorite elves doing? Come in, come in. Where, where are your parents? Are they, are they not here with you? I give her like the super Hollywood greeting, the mwah, mwah. hi, Mary. So good to see you. My parents aren't traveling with us this time. This is just a duo act. Oh, well, it's lovely to have you. Um, hi, Mary. Are these your, your two bodyguards? Hello, handsome. She says, waving at ransom. Handsome, Ransom. <laughs> uh, that's our significant others. Hello. Oh, I see. Uh, well, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Did you say your name was Ransom? Ransom it is. Now, uh, pleasant trees aside, have you heard anything about Secundus coming in this direction? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a new band. Um, they will probably be looking to perform in one of the taverns here. Well, uh, I, I look forward to hearing them. And uh, you must be... She gives Olivia a look up and down. You must be Kellen's girl, then. She's our band manager, actually, and my girl. Isn't she amazing? Hmm. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Olivia. As I say, like, moving my Christmas hat that I'm also obviously wearing during the Christmas <laughs> right now. Oh. Welcome. This is the Christmas episode. Oh. Welcome to the Grub Hub. Hmm. Well, off to the other two taverns then. Oh, you won't be but... staying. Oh, we'll probably need to stay the night. Can we expect at least a, a song or two from you two? Mary, for you, a song anytime. Well, we'll definitely come back as long as we're not like fighting anyone or having to prove our turf over Secundus or anything. So let everyone know, Kess and Kellen, performing here tonight. Well, I'll, I'll let the people know around here. Uh, have a good time. Goodbye. Bye, Mary. Okay. Olivia, I think she liked you. She's really nice. Yeah, I think she liked me, too. <laughs> she seemed really enthusiastic. Yeah. She's a pal. Okay. Now we go to... Frank's favorite. Famous. Frank's famous. Frank's famous tavern. Uh, it is run, of course, by a, a gentleman named Frank. Uh, their specialty here are the sausages that they serve. Um, and it's a, a three-story building with a central column of the tavern being uh, very open. So you can have a room on the second or third floor and kind of like walk out into the hallway and just look down onto the tavern floor. Um, and does Frank know us here? Frank is... No, you have never played here. Um, okay. Maybe he's heard you guys at the Grubhub once before, but he, you've never met him personally. You just know of him. Do we know what he looks like so we can go up to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frank is a tall fellow with a big belly and a long, bristly black beard. Um, he okay. must be like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, maybe 260 pounds. Just this huge beer belly that's always covered with a stained apron. Uh, even when he like walks around town, he wears the same thing. Uh, he thinks of it somewhat as like his calling card. Uh, All right, well, we immediately go seek him out as soon as we get inside. Sure. You step on inside and Frank is back there. There's a little grill stuck behind the bar. Um, and a little flue above him to let the girl smoke go up. And he's back there flipping some sausages. Gives you a big, hey guys, welcome to Frank's Famous. Can I get you a sausage? Maybe a beer? I say super enthusiastically and let him know who we are. Uh-huh. Performer as well. Uh, <clears throat> there's a, a stage over there if you guys want to perform. And 
<laughs> and uh, I can get you a sausage if you'd like. Well, Frank, I've got actually some really good news for you. Some world-class performers are going to be heading in this direction sometime soon. You should try to grab them. Uh-huh. What are they called? Secundus? Yeah. Uh, they are uh, going to for sure enthrall any audience. Well, that sounds like a, a real good thing. Let me shake your hand there, buddy. He says right after wiping his nose. Sure, I threw him my hand. Okay. Ah. Uh, he shakes it, you know, a big, rough handshake. That's a, a, a good lead. Thank, thank you, man. Um, but aren't the, those two lovely, lovely elfin ladies behind you also performers? Is there some reason why uh, we shouldn't have them perform instead of this other group of folks? Oh, we can't tire these fine ladies out with too many performances. This fine uh, duo out. Um... Perhaps some, perhaps tomorrow night. Oh well, we'll see what the Secundus group's all about then. Uh, well, uh, sure, I can't interest you guys in some sausages or some beers. He says, flipping over the sausages with his hands. I'm good. I'm actually a vegetarian, but thanks. Yeah, you know, I heard that about you, uh, pointy-eared fellows. And, uh, you know what they say around here: the pointier ears, the less meat you eat. Nah, given the sanitation of this area, I don't. I think I'll pass. I don't know what you're talking about. This place is as sanitary as they come. I kill every cockroach I see. Can't be very many of them left anymore. Uh, but beggars can't. Remember. Whatever. This is Frank's famous. We don't need just four customers. We'll be fine without you. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. All that's left is Splash of the, the three taverns in town. Splash is next door to Frank's Famous, and it is the exact opposite. Um, it is a kind of quiet place uh, that is all on one level, but it has very, like, good and intricate detail carved into the every post, every pole. The bar has little carvings on it. Um, and you can actually see the bartender. Is it mermaid or, themed? Excuse me? It's mermaid themed. Is it yes. mermaid themed? Yes. Yes, it is mermaid themed, <laughs> actually. Um, the That's bartender who is yeah. at the end of the bar is currently carving a mermaid that seems to be uh, like a post that at, from the end of the bar to the ceiling that already has some carvings in it, but he seems to be working on the bottom and reshaping it into a... Well, right now there's like a rock and a tail coming off of it. It's probably going to be a mermaid sitting on a rock on a pole. Um, but, you know, he's just working on it at the beginning. Uh, he sees the four of you come in. You look around and it's kind of quiet in here. There's like maybe two other patrons... Um, but not much is going on. It's a kind of a dead spot. I walk up to the person making the, the mermaid thing and I say, that looks beautiful. He looks up and goes, oh, uh, I, I didn't see you there. Um, thank you. Can I, can I get you something to drink maybe? Uh, some water or tea would be great. Sure, sure. Uh, what about for the rest of you? Truth be told, we're here just to war give you a uh, big warning. Uh, apparently, there is a performer, and, and you didn't hear it from me in case this performer comes over here, but there is a performer who uses some tricks with their music to put everyone into a trance, and that's led to a rash of crime. So you should definitely make sure that they do not perform here. They're called oh Secundus, if you've heard of them. Oh my, well, that sounds terrible. Thank you for the, the heads up on that. Um, can I... Uh, how how do, you, do you know about them? Uh, we're just ahead of them, and uh, we were from their last uh, performed city over in... Evermond. Oh, wow, that, that, that sounds terrible. Well, um, thank you for the, the, the warning and heads up. Uh, can I offer you anything else other than a uh, water? He says, tapping a, a large water bottle or barrel, uh, and then sliding Kess the water. 
I'll have a drink, please. Of course, please. Uh, ha- he pours each of you a, a glass of something. Um, as a a short person, What's your probably a name. You have a really nice voice. Uh, his name is Bradley. Have you ever tried spoken word? You have a really good voice for it. I speak words frequently. Yeah, totally. It's deep. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure. I've always it's told I have. It's a form of art. It's like poetry. Hmm. Singing. It's kind of new age. I've, I've never really tried my hand at poetry or anything like that, but that's a, a, a wonderful compliment you've given me. Thank you. You've brightened my day. You're so peaceful. Do you do meditation? <laughs> or like, <laughs> then the, uh, what's it called? Crap. It would have been so funny if I could have remembered. <laughs> like going away in a place where you don't talk. No, no, I, I, I like to be social with people. Oh, a silent meditation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I'm, I very much like talking with people. I, I, I just prefer to, to carve while I work. That's why this whole place looks like this. I just get bored very easily. Um, anywho. Uh, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. He goes back to carving his little post. Um, You're on the table while we're drinking and whatnot. And I comment to the group. Okay, so you might wonder... I talked up Secundus at Frank's area. So that place is an excellent stakeout point for uh, their performance since there's two, there's three floors on there. So we can listen to the performance on any floor without much notice. We can uh, be on the top floor, for example, and see if there's any difference in the entrancing quality of that music. And it's a good they won't idea. As much since I would have stuck out like a sore thumb if we all stood, uh, if we all sat in the first floor and looked around while everyone else was hypnotized by that music. Ransom, you're like really smart. I think you should be our like chief brand strategy officer for the band. Makes sense. The first thing that I want to figure out is what is the secret behind Secundus's music. We get that, we can uh, easily make this group the next hit band across the land. That sounds amazing. I like your thinking, Ransom. And I give him a quick kiss on the cheek. Uh, as, as she comes That's in, they like, very smoothly turn towards so that instead of a kiss on the cheek, it's on the lips. <laughs> oh. oh, sneaky. And then I, like, gently pat him on the shoulder. Like, not hard, but, like, harder than normal. And I'm like, you sneaky. All right. The sun is beginning to set. And you guys are, I think, hanging out in Frank's Famous Tavern? Right? On the no, third we're floor? we're in Splash. Okay. We were in Splash. We visit all of them just to... Just occasionally to see if there's any news of Sikindas. All right, so you guys hang out and splash, and maybe and keep an eye on the other ones to make sure or to know when Secundus shows up. Well, sure enough, uh, as the sun begins to go down, whoever it is, whoever's turn it is to go scout out the tavern, sees Secundus uh, strolling into town. The group stops. They all get together and chat. There's the five backup dancers and then the the two main performers. They all come together in a little circle, uh, put their hands around each other, bow their heads in. You can't overhear what they're saying, but after the words, they pop up and march straight towards Frank's famous tavern. Damn. Why did they pick Frank's famous? (laughs) Well, that's pretty lucky when I hear that news. We should go uh, set up. Secundus heads into Frank's Famous. The party hears the news and heads into Frank's Famous to set up. And why don't we find out what happens after we take a break? So we'll see you guys in about five minutes on the other side. Bye-bye. <laughs>